Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of True Tea. Glad you guys could join me. So this week, um, we're going to be talking about love and marriage, Huntsville. Got a few things I want to get off my chest real quick. (sighs) Not going to be too long, but got some things I want to talk about. The show pretty much picks up where it left off last week with Tisha and the um, therapist. And it was pretty much, you know, just sad to see because um, they get into talking about pretty much um, how Tisha defends Marceau and how Tisha can't really defend Marceau unless she knows for sure that what people are saying isn't true. And we all know that the rumors have went around about Marceau having a um, baby outside of his marriage. You know, um, they shut that rumor down, but deep down, I think that it's something that Tisha still thinks about. And in this episode, you can see that Tisha is really insecure within her marriage. And like I said, Marceau plays a big part in that. And this is how I feel from the outside looking in. Okay. Of course, I'm not in that marriage, but that's what I get from it, you know. And I feel like Tisha, what is the saying? Where there's smoke, there's fire. I think that Tisha is not 100% sure that the rumors are not true. But for the sake of her marriage, um, she's just going to go along with it. It's not something that she wants to believe. So she's going to just, I don't know, I just, I don't know. But it's sad to see because who wants to see their wife miserable and unhappy? And I feel like Marceau could fix that. The insecurities that Tisha have within her marriage Marceau can easily shut that down, but it's a control tactic. You know, he wants to keep her guessing. And for the life of me, I don't understand how a man could want his partner to even think that he's out there doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. And in order for Tisha to keep bringing it to him or what people say about him, she has to be feeling a way. She has to be wondering, okay, is that really true? Even though she defends him deep down, Tisha don't 100% know that those rumors are not true. So I don't know. Um, And then the therapist asked her, well, I forgot how he worded the question, but it pretty much came down to uh, what did Marceau need her for? And they got into talking about what what, uh, Marceau needed from Tisha which was for her to be dependent upon him. And he needs Tisha to be dependent upon him so that it would be much harder for her to leave. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way that guys do. They want you to depend on them. They want you to need them so bad that when you want to walk away, it's going to be hard to do. You know what I mean? Because you depend on them. That's the way that they are. So, I don't want to get too much into that, you know, because it's pretty much the same thing. Tisha being insecure and Marcel giving her a reason to be. So hopefully they get that straightened out because, like I said uh, last week, Marcel is going to end up like Martel. He's going to continue to play these games until Tisha isn't there anymore to play him with. He plays on that girl, that woman's insecurities. It's like he enjoys it. And a lot of times these guys, you know, they're so content, you know, with the bullshit that they're doing. It's all fun and games while they're doing it, you know, and he knows that Tisha isn't he feels that Tisha isn't going anywhere. So he has no incentive to change. He has no incentive to give her the things that she wants. And she's not even asking for that much. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that you don't even want to give her the little bit that she's asking for, that's a fucking problem. And it's not funny. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and then this depression thing. I just feel like he brought that shit up to get Tisha off of his back. And I really don't even want to hear any more about it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I honestly feel like he's not depressed. I honestly feel like he got tired of Tisha nagging him about the rumors. So this was a tactic that he was going to use to have her back up. And then he had the nerve to pretty much blame. 
I don't know. It, it felt like he was bl- last week or the other week before. It felt like he was blaming her for him being depressed. And I, I don't know. I just feel like Tisha, uh, she didn't plan on being a stay at home mom. No one would go out there and get like 25 degrees if they planned on just being a stay at home mom. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like she's not happy. And there needs to be some kind of compromise, or I just feel like the, the marriage is not going to last. And if it does last, Tisha is going to be miserable. And she's going to be the one depressed if she's not already depressed. So I'm going to move away from that. And I want to talk about Martel's stupid ass. You know, um, the scene with him and Melody and the kids, that was pretty, I don't know. It, 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 it tugged at your heartstrings. And I say that because when a divorce, it doesn't only affect the husband and the wife, it affects the children too. And sometimes we don't realize that until later on in life when they're acting out or when they finally get up enough nerve to, you know, say how it is affecting them. But these kids, you know, even though they're young, they, you know, they're pretty uh, articulate and they have no problem expressing how they feel. So with the scene uh, uh, today in the episode, uh, it was uh, Martel, Melody, and their children. They were in the park, I guess. And so it was pretty much an activity that the therapist put together for them to do with the kids. And it consisted of like a little card game. You know, um, the children would pick a card and they would ask their parents whatever question they wanted to ask them. So they got to ask their parents questions, you know, and one of the questions uh, was, uh, Martel Jr., I think he asked them, damn, I forgot the questions, but it had a lot to do with uh, where they planted, where their parents planning on marrying um, other people and stuff like that. And of course, your children, the kids don't want to see their mom and their dad be with anybody else but each other. You know what I mean? And then Martel Jr. said that he didn't want that, you know, he wished that they could get back together. So that he wouldn't cry sometimes. And that was sad. You know what I'm saying? And it just pissed me off because guys don't think about the shit that they do. They don't think about how their actions affect other people like their children. They don't give a fuck. It's all about them. He went and messed up his entire family for a piece of ass. You know what I'm saying? And he looks so goddamn stupid to me. It's like it's so... It's just crazy. And you want to know something that's just so baffling to me when I watched the episode, this week's episode. Martel was in confessionals. And you know what? I'll I'll wait. I want to continue to talk about this. So while they were talking to the children, Melody was doing pretty much all the talking. And that shit pissed me off as well. Because here Martel is. He's the one that went out and slept around on his wife, fucked up the whole family. But yet you laying there, laying there on the ground, looking stupid, letting uh, Melody do all the talking. Why don't you talk? How about at, let the kids know what you've done, ask for forgiveness, and you can start from there. Instead of just laying back, letting Melody do the dirty work. You know what I'm saying? It just pisses me the fuck off. You know, excuse my language, but it it just pisses me off. You know what I'm saying? And then um, I believe it was Mariah or I I forgot. It's the older uh, the older uh, child's uh, I forgot her name, but you guys know who I'm speaking about. She said that she saw her dad going to a hotel with another woman. And it started out with her asking, uh, do either of you have a crush on somebody else? You know, and then the, the uh, Martel said, yeah, I got a crush on somebody. I got a crush on you all, you know. And then the baby was like, uh-uh, because I seen you going to a hotel with somebody else. Y'all got on the elevator together. And here's the baffling part. Martel got in the confessionals and then he said something about uh, Melody should protect him, meaning, you know, it's just the nerve. You're the man in a relationship and Melody needs to protect you. Where was the fucking protection when you were on social media letting everybody know that she had an abortion? Something that was just between you two. But you're out telling the whole world that 
Melody had an abortion just to drag her through the mud because you didn't want to be down there by yourself. You was miserable. You wanted her to be miserable. So you just went on a, a, a smear campaign trying to drag this lady through the mud so she can look as bad as you did. But you didn't do shit but make yourself look stupid. Because who would say, who would even tell that to the world? It's just fucking ridiculous. Where was the protection then? But now she's supposed to protect you? Where was the protection when that 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 whore that he was sleeping with got on social media disrespecting the hell out of Melody. Where was the protection in? He didn't protect her from that. And furthermore, where was the protection when he got on social media to tell the world that Melody didn't give her baby a bath? You know what I'm saying? But now he's supposed to protect her. This is not something that Melody told their daughter. Their daughter saw this with her own eyes. She saw her dad get on the elevator with another woman. I'm sorry. Melly is supposed to protect you from what? What? The truth? It's just fucking. It's it's baffling to me. The way that he thinks. The way that he thinks. It's just fucking ridiculous. And I just feel like. I just looked at those kids and I just, I listened to them speak and he is just, how do I put it? It's just so frustrating. It's not frustrating. I don't even know the fucking word that I'm looking for, but the fact that you would go and mess up your entire family for some brace mouth asshole from the projects who has absolutely nothing going on for herself but fake bags and a two dollar ass flea market ass online store you know just and just to think that this girl got on social media and said that uh, Martell was the brains in the marriage and she only said that because she's just as slow as Martell is and she had the nerve to call Melody slow you know what I'm saying? I just, I just can't. I, I, I cannot. I cannot. The fact that he said there should be some protection there. That was crazy as hell. He should have thought about protection when he was fucking that whole raw. And he wouldn't have to worry about a fifth baby. The one that he don't want to acknowledge. That's where the protection should have came in at. And then just to think that he out here fucking on these women without protection and then bringing his ass back to Melody. And you mad that she won't suck your dick? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's sad to see a family break up. It really is, you know, but I just feel like if Melody would have stayed, he would have continued to drag her down. He would have continued to drag her down in the fucking mud and just just beat her down. You know, I I didn't see any good coming out of that. And in the show, he also said that he was the one that wanted the divorce. The things that he pulls out his ass is just. It's just borderline insane. So you mean to tell me you're the one that wanted the divorce? But I remember on a previous episode where you damn near chased Melody down the street in her car. Asking her, is the relationship, is is the marriage over? But you're the one that wanted the divorce? I don't understand. What it is, is that you can't take the fact that Melody left your ass. Because Melody, in his mind, Melody was supposed to stay. And allow him to keep cheating on her. Because she had already done it for five years. And I don't really blame Melody for doing what she did. Anybody who gets married don't think about getting divorced. Anybody in their right minds. When you get married, it's supposed to be your forever. You found your person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Okay, there you go. It's supposed to be a forever thing. Okay, so I don't blame her for wanting to hold on to her marriage, for giving him time to get himself together. But he's not one who 
who, how do I put it? He didn't have enough sense to get his shit together because he thought that Melody wasn't going to leave him. And the fact that she did, he cannot handle that shit, which is why in his mind, he's tell you know, he's telling himself that he is the one that divorced her, which is an absolute fucking lie because we all know that he did not want that divorce. He do not want that divorce. And if Melody said, come on, Markel Halt, his ass would be right back there with her. Right back there with her. So the fact that he can just pull this nonsense up out his ass at any given moment, it's just, uh, it bothers, the, it bothers my mind. <laughs> it, it's, it's fucking crazy. He's insane, you know? And he says things like that because I, I, I don't know. It's just, it just makes him feel good. And I know that his ass cry at night. I know that he goes home, wherever his home is, and he cries himself to sleep every night just thinking about the mess that he's fucking made. Meaning, you done dismantle your entire family for this brace mouth ass hoe who ain't worth shit. And I say she ain't worth shit because any woman who will partake in hurting another woman, you ain't shit. You ain't shit. And she mad as hell that she ain't Melody. Melody gonna always have one up on her ass. Melody is educated. She's attractive. She's smart. She's a businesswoman. You know what I'm saying? Got things going for herself. And she even has a sh a, 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 a goddamn shelf to put her merchandise on. The, go the God Said Go merchandise. As opposed to uh, Ariane. Who just throw her customer shit on the floor. You know, just trifling. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get off of that. But Martel's a piece of work. And then you guys, did you see his Instagram post from last was it last week? This fool had the nerve to put a post on his Instagram page. And it said he he no, he took a picture with um some guys, I forgot one of the guys is Chris. Chris uh, was one of the guys that he took a picture with. Also, uh, I believe that was Destiny's ex-husband. And it was two other men that I didn't know. But the caption read something like this. And I don't know it word for word, but it went something like this. Uh, high value men. Where are all the submissive women? The women who are conventional, conventionally pretty or some shit. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, first of all, why are you in a picture with a caption that reads high value men? How the fuck are you high value when you ain't worth shit? I'll never understand that. First of all, anybody who's high value don't have to walk around saying they're high value. That's number one. Number two, how are you high value when you broke? Your credit is fucked. You no longer have your wife. You don't have a builder's license. You don't even have common sense. Where's the fucking value in that? Where? And then he wanted to throw a jab. I think he was trying to throw a jab at Melody when he said conventionally pretty or some shit like that. Melody can wear wigs all day. She can wear makeup. She can wear all that shit. But when she take that shit off, she's still an attractive woman. So that was an epic fail. Now, what she could have did was put up a post and said, where are all the men with hairlines? That wouldn't include your ass. Where are the men with builder's license? That wouldn't include your ass. Where are all the men with money? And that wouldn't include your ass. She could have been petty, but ain't nobody got time for that shit. Martel is, he is a character. A whole entire fucking clown. And it's not even fucking funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate that guys just go out and do dumb shit and say dumb shit. And I don't know. I, it, it's almost as if they don't have not a single fucking brain cell. Not one. Not one. And I don't know. I just... He leaves me speechless sometimes. Just his his entire thought process and I just sit here and think about the way Marceau 
and Martell think? Martell didn't think that Melody was going anywhere. He thought that he had locked her in. She had those four kids, three kids at the time, or however many she had at the time when she left. He thought that she, he had her locked in and she said that he even told her you wasn't supposed to leave. And he also told her that wasn't nobody going to want her with, with four kids. This is the shit that guys tell women when they don't want them to go anywhere. So they try to lower your self esteem so that you will stay and put up with that bullshit. Same thing with Marceau and Tisha. Same thing. He wants her. Tisha said that Marceau told her in the beginning that he wanted her to be more uh, dependent upon him because she was too independent. And now that she is dependent upon him, he don't want to give her the things that she need. It's fucking crazy the way that they think. And he thinks that Tisha isn't going anywhere, which is why he's he, he's um, he's doing what he's doing. If if your wife come to you and say, OK, I'm not happy. Can we work on this? Can you do this? Can you spend a little more time with me? Anybody with common sense who loves their wife and value their wife, they're going to do it, especially if she's just asking for a little more time. Is your wife that bad that you don't want to spend time with her? If so, then you don't need to be with her. Why don't you marry her? If she's going to be a single mom in the marriage, why the fuck do she needs to be miserable and stay in the marriage with you? One day she's going to see that shit and she's going to walk the fuck away if he don't get his shit together. And he's going to be looking like a sad ass duck, just like Martell. Every fucking episode, he just looks sad, just sad. And guys like him, they like to polish themselves on the outside make themselves look good on the outside because their insides are so fucked up. All of those muscles and shit, that's just a facade. To take away from how fucked up he is on the inside. And that's that's all that is. And I don't know. Today today's episode, it was just sad it was just sad to watch. Um with Tisha and then that, 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 that scene with uh, Melody and the kids. Because you, you can tell that those kids want their parents to get back together. They even said that. They said that they don't want their parents. They didn't want a stepmom or a stepdad. <clears throat> and Martell Jr. said he was going to shut that shit down. You know, he, he they just didn't want it. And rightfully so. That's their parents. Of course they want to see their parents together. And I just, and and like I said in the beginning, it just pisses me off to to think that this guy done went and ruined his whole entire fucking marriage for this hoe who ain't worth shit. You should be not only ashamed, but devastated. And I just know that he cries in the car. And I know that he cries himself to sleep every motherfucking night. Because Melody been flourishing ever since she left his ass. She ain't miss a beat. Now whether she get home and cry to herself. Hey, it happens. But hey, Melody gonna be okay. You know, Martell is a complete and utter fucking clown. And... I doubt if it change. I doubt if it change. And that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, this episode and the, the, the issue with Tisha and Kimmy. I just feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, I just feel like <sighs> whatever, <laughs> whatever at this point, because clearly uh, there's something going on between the two that hasn't been resolved. It was supposed to have been left back in Vegas, but apparently it hasn't, so we'll see where that goes. But that's all I have for this episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to come back. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or the next day. But I got some shit that I want to get off my chest about Nicki Minaj and a couple of other people. Um, so I hope you guys come back and check me out. Um, I'll talk to you guys then. Take care. Be safe. And I'll chat with you guys later.